In this video, I'm going to show you how you can share the contents of a variable between two or more Adobe Captivate projects. Hi everyone, my name is Paul Wilson and I make Adobe Captivate tutorials. If you'd like to be notified when new tutorials come out, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon below. In this tutorial, I've done this before in Adobe Captivate Classic and one of my viewers pointed out that when they tried the exact same procedure, it wasn't working for them in the all new Adobe Captivate or Adobe Captivate 12 if you will. So with a little bit of trial and error, I was able to figure out how to get it to work. And that's what we're going to look at today. Let's get started. I've created two Adobe Captivate project files here. The first one is simply called Module 1, and I've got a second one called Module 2 to essentially simulate what it would be like if, let's say, we captured a learner's name, first name in the first module, and then shared it with all the subsequent modules in a multi-module e-learning course, a, a series of courses, a curriculum, if you will. So the first thing we need to do is we need to capture that learner's name here. So what I've got on my screen here is an input field. I've simply said first name. Enter your first name in this field as you would like to be addressed throughout the course and press start to begin. Now, when you create an input field, what Adobe Captivate does is generates a variable, a very generic looking variable. In this case, it's called variable edit box string underscore one. And we want to use something a little bit more meaningful, or I recommend that you use something a little bit more meaningful. So let's go into the window dropdown and select variables. And I'm just going to click on the plus icon here and we'll give our variable a name. We'll call it student name. You want to make sure that it is set up to be a string because we're storing, you know, alphanumeric information. We don't want an initial value. So it'll, essentially it'll be null or blank and we can go ahead and press create. And that's now available there. So let's just click outside of the variables window to close that. And what I'll do is I'll change this input field from this very generic and difficult to understand variable to our name that we're going to use here. Sometimes you have to wait a second or two before your newly created variable shows up. Click away, click on the input field. And of course, now we can select student name. Now to store this variable, this student name variable, somewhere where we can retrieve it again later. We're going to use a feature that's built into your browser called local storage. And we're going to write that into our start button code. The start button in this case will take us to the next slide and continue to run through this particular module here. So let's go into the interactions section of our properties inspector. And we are going to go to the next slide. That's one of the actions that we're going to perform. We're also going to add some JavaScript. Now let me show you that JavaScript. I like to use Visual Studio Code just to write out my JavaScript so it's very clear. And you know, it also highlights your syntax and makes sure that you're typing things correctly. Now, essentially what you're seeing here, let's explain this part here. This part of the line here is calling on an object named local storage. Local storage is a built-in browser object that provides access to the browser's local storage. So that's what we're doing here. And we're assigning it a name. So there are two components here. This first part here, the key or string name, student name, that's what we're calling it. And the first argument is like a label or an identifier that helps you retrieve the stored data later. The value I'm tapping into Adobe Captivate's API for JavaScript here. So window.cp API interface dot get variable value student name. So we're using literally the same name for the variable that we're going to 
use inside of Captivate, which is here, and we're storing it in local storage under the same name, student name. So I'm gonna select all this text here, copy that, and we're gonna go into my Start button here, and we're gonna add a new action, and we'll click on More, because it's not one of the default actions that are available. Down near the bottom, you've got Run JavaScript and I can simply paste in that line of JavaScript here. Click done. I want this to run before I leave the slide, so let's select that and use these controls to reorder this up. So run JavaScript, and then we'll go to slide two. And of course, during your first module, you can use that first name however you wish. And I'll show you how you can display the contents of a variable just with inside Adobe Captivate. So when you arrive on this second slide here, we can add that person's first name right after the word welcome here. All I need to do is type in dollar sign, dollar sign, and that activates our list of variables. And we can simply select it. So I'll click on student name, and it fills that out and puts a couple of dollar signs at the end there. So... In this case here, when you preview in a browser, it's going to create uh, a special local web server. So what I recommend that you do, if you want to test this out, you should actually publish it out in its entirety. But for right now, I think we can preview this and see what this just simply looks like for any users looking at this right now. So let's click that. I'm going to type in Paul is my first name and press start and you'll see welcome Paul press the continue button to proceed with the first module. Now you can double check if Paul has been stored in local storage by clicking on the three dot icon in your browser here and going down to more tools. I'm using Chrome but there'd be something similar in other browsers as well and we're going to go into developer tools. And you'll see underneath the application tab, an entry for local storage. And you'll see there student name, and it's got a value of Paul. Perfect. That's going to work fine. So I'm going to go ahead and press save, and I'm going to publish this just to my desktop here. So let's go ahead and publish that, and we can close that for now. We'll return to that in a moment. Next, let's look at module two. Now in module two, we want to look at local storage, grab the contents of that local storage key or variable student name and create a captivate variable and populate that variable with the same name so that our learners don't have to type in their first name every single time they launch one of these modules within this particular curriculum here. So first thing we should probably do is go into our variables window here. And I'm going to actually use a different variable name in this case so I can keep it clear as to which one's which here. So I'm going to click on the plus icon to create a new variable. And I'm going to paste in imported student name. We are going to change that to a string variable. And we can go ahead and press create. And we can click outside of our variables window to close the variables window. Now in this case here, I'm not gonna run this by clicking a button. Instead, I'm gonna run this JavaScript by arriving on this slide or, or just simply entering this first slide. Let's take a look at the script that we're going to use for this case here. So we're gonna use window.cpi interface. A CPI interface is the JavaScript interface that is built into Adobe Captivate. We're gonna set the variable value of a variable called imported student name with the contents of window.localstorage.getItem student name, right? Makes sense, it's pretty straightforward. I'm gonna select all of this and I'm gonna copy that and we'll go into our second Captivate module here. Go into the interaction section of the Properties Inspector and we're going to add an interaction. In this case here, we're going to base this on the trigger of entering the slide. So I'm going to click on slide enter and 
you know, you've got all the default actions, but this is a more advanced sort of thing. So we're going to scroll down to run JavaScript and I'm going to paste this in here. Okay. I'm going to press done and that's basically it. Now, what we can do is make sure that that variable is displayed properly by including it on the slide. So when the person launches this second module, again, they typed in their module in the first module. We want to populate their name here. You know, welcome Paul or Steve or John or Mary or whatever it might be back to this second module here. So again, we're going to use the dollar sign, dollar sign, and we'll select our imported student name variable that we've just created there. Okay, so let's go ahead and publish this and we'll test it in sort of a live environment here. So I'm going to publish this to my desktop. The reason I can't use preview is the preview is essentially another local server and it won't recognize the previously saved stuff from the other one. So we'll go ahead and publish this to our desktop here and we can go ahead and launch this first course. So let's start with module one. So here we go. Here's module one. We're arriving on the slide here. I'm going to type in my name and we can go ahead and press start. Welcome Paul. Press the continue button to proceed with this module. Again, we can double check in our developer tools if student name has been assigned a value of Paul and it has. So let's go on and we'll launch the second module. And I'm just using the folder and the index file, index.html in the folder that I've just published to my desktop here. And you can see here, without any sort of interaction, it recognizes that I'm Paul. And of course, it populates that information, not only in, in this first slide, but I can use it over and over again throughout this course to personalize the e-learning and make it seem like I'm speaking directly to the student for this particular course. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.